I managed to maintain to explain. We hit it evolve, That's but gross. ain't the damn thing changed. I'm sorry. Thank you for joining us for episode 55, Meet the Astrologer. Today I have with me the Saffron Sage, astrologer Cassandra Osterberg. 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 How are you doing today? She said. I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. But did I get you? Do uh, you just have a YouTube channel? Yeah, I do have a YouTube channel. All right. And I, uh, that's the name of the, the YouTube channel? The yeah, it's Saffron? Saffron Sage Astrology. Okay. Okay. Uh, why that name? Oh, you know, I wanted it to be something different and unique. And I wanted it to be um, something like deep, you know, deep and wise. So that's just what I ended up coming up with. What's the saffron? Do you know? Oh, saffron is like a flower. It's like a rare spice. Um, and it's kind of, uh, uh, it's rare. It's not commonly found. It's kind of hard to find. It's um, so that's kind of where that came from. Are you are you rare and and <laughs> kind of hard to find? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, where'd you grow up? I grew up in a small town called Port Angeles. It's uh, in Washington State on the Olympic Peninsula. So um, a little bit isolated because it's out there. You have to kind of take a ferry to get there. Um, not well, you don't have to, but it, it's it's isolated. So I grew up there um, until I was like 19, and um, it was it's beautiful, so beautiful there. Um, you grew up in a state where when we when we hear Washington, everybody would say D.C. and you would say the state. And, there's a Washington state. <laughs> so you grew up way in the corner of the United States. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was great, though. I mean, I spent my childhood like going hiking and fishing and going up to the mountain. And, you know, it's just at the time, I don't think I appreciated it as much. But now looking back, it's I have all these memories of just like being with the earth and in nature that I think a lot of people uh, miss if they don't if they don't grow up in like a place like that Uh, this is off topic but while walking in them woods and on the mountains did you ever see any Bigfoots no big feet no no big feet no (laughs) aliens nothing fun (laughs) like that (laughs) well you know I, I used to watch finding Bigfoot so you know they used to be in that state <laughs> you know, looking around, because it's and then I watched uh, the loggers. Don't they cut a lot of trees down there? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Um, hey, you have any siblings? Yeah, I do. I have a brother and a sister. Are you the oldest, youngest, middle? I'm the youngest, and my brothers and sisters are much older. So my stepsister had her first kid when I was five. So I got to be an aunt when I was super young. It was really fun. (laughs) But um, yeah, so I'm the youngest kind of by far of my brothers and sisters. You have a good relationship with them? We stay in touch and uh, we all kind of have our own lives though. Mm -hmm. Uh, Your parents, how's your relationship with them? Are they still around? Yeah, I'm lucky my parents are still around, and um, I do stay in touch with them as well, Um, even though I'm the one, like, I'm the one who's always gone, right? So I left when I was a teenager and explored the world, Um, but it's, I always have somewhere I can come back to, and my parents are really good down-to-earth people, so I'm grateful for that. Did you grow up in a religious family? Mm. No, I no, but I had an interesting kind of experience uh, with religion because I had like I had neighbors that took me to church when I was like I don't know six or seven, um, so I kind of dabbled with that a bit just because of that, and then I I ended up getting sober in high school, and um, wait, there wait, was wait, a period. Wait, <laughs> wait, hold up, you just wait. Did you say you got sober in high school? Yeah, I got sober when I was really young. 
Like I went to treatment and I got in a lot of trouble and stuff. Wait, and wait, so I, wait, wait. You started drinking when you was young? Yeah, like 12. Wow. Wow. I know. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I know. I, it's you wouldn't you wouldn't know that, you know, um, <laughs> but like so I had some experiences where I dabbled with going to church to sort of like try to fix whatever was wrong with me, I guess you could say. And it, it didn't stick definitely. Um, but, but I, my parents were more like, you know, you don't have to go to church to find God. You can just, you know, be with nature. They weren't ever really religious, but I think they had their own belief systems. Um, and maybe a little bit of that was like imprinted on me, even though I wasn't really there when I was younger, I was more wanting a wanting a, to be told what to do, you know, if that makes sense. Uh, did you go through the 12 step program? I did, but I ended up leaving it later on. But so, the, re the reason I'm asking is because I know the 12 step program really kind of pushes like a, it has a religious tone to it. Yes, very much uh, belief in a higher power and and powerlessness and and all that. Um, and it it talks about God a lot. Um, but I, I mean, I was 14 when I was going through 12 steps when I started. Um, 15, really. Uh, I turned 15 in treatment. So. I was, I think, I mean, I was young, so I just kind of went with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just went with it because I thought it was going to help me. And um, so, but I ended up leaving later once I started really getting more into spirituality because it just, I didn't feel like I could freely think for myself and stay in the, like, stay in the 12th step. Like, you have to have a certain mentality. Um or else you're wrong. And it's like, I needed some space after being in that kind of a situation. And I think it gave me the structure to just have something to believe and, and, and have something to follow. But then I got to that point where I needed to stop following someone else's path and find my own. And so when you left there, what was, what, what was your first, what do you think was the first different spirituality thing you jumped into? Yeah, so this was like, I think I was about 24, um, and I started doing Reiki, and it was like I started realizing that the 12-step program was kind of uh, fear-based, and I, I just remember um, like knowing that even when I was in 12-step, if I was slacking, I would have a dream, like like you have drinking dreams when you're in recovery. Some people don't know this, but people in recovery have dreams that they're drinking or using when they, and for me, this would happen when I was like not calling my sponsor or, you know, not doing the things you're supposed to do. After a certain amount of time, I would have a dream like that. And so what happened when I was, I was in this stage where I was like, I think I want to leave the 12 step, but I'm scared because I've been told my whole life that if I do that, I'll die. <laughs> um, so it's like, I just remember coming to this point where I remembered I was the one having the dream. I was the one, it was my own subconscious mind telling me I was off track or on track. And I just felt like I can trust myself to make those decisions. And so Reiki was the first thing that I think just opened me up to have some of those realizations. Who, and the, did, what what introduced you to Reiki? How did you find out about Reiki? I must have heard of it somewhere because I remember Googling it when I was <laughs> in South Korea. Oh, I, wait, 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 hold up. How did you get to South Korea? <laughs> I just... Um, wait, I, when did you... Wait, 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 hold up. Let me back up here. <laughs> Last I heard, you was in rehab at 15, and now you doing learning Reiki in South Korea? Yeah, okay, so a lot of time Wait. passed between those things. So oh. <laughs> after I got sober, I went to college, so I moved away from my small town, and I was going to college. I was still going to meetings all the time. What and did I was, you what did you uh go to school for when you I went majored to in Spanish. 
<laughs> okay. Which I don't really use now, but um, I thought going to college was going to like open doors and I was going to get a good job. And, you know, a lot of people at that time were doing that. Um, but then I wanted to see the world. I wanted to go somewhere else. And I remember being in 12 step and thinking to myself, I wish I could just go to another country and become a monk. And it's, I never became a monk, but I remember that was like the closest thing I knew in my mind at that time to having a more spiritual life. And how old, so, how, how old were you at this time? Probably 22. Oh, so this is at your Saturn Square? Probably, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe, yeah, because it was not yeah, tw- my Saturn return yet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah 20, about 21, and it would be your Saturn Square. Yeah, yeah. I think a relationship ended at that time and I was like finishing my degree. I didn't know what I was going to do with it. And so I ended up. So you did. So you graduated? I graduated. Yeah. And then maybe a year later. In Spanish? Yeah, I I majored in Spanish. I graduated. I got my BA. So 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 in all actuality, you 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 kind of can be an interpreter. I mean, I could have if I had pursued it. What you mean could have? You kind of still are. I mean, I still could, could, I still could interpret using Spanish, but. Well, 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 what I mean is you are an interpreter. You just interpret another subject. (laughs) The stars. That's true. You know, it's true. It kind of is like interpreting, isn't it? Pretty much. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I mean, you know, selling, you know, here in Spanish and telling somebody who doesn't know Spanish, you know, what that means. It's kind of the same thing. That's a really good point. Yeah, that's a really good point. You know, big picture looking at it. So now you 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 broke up at your Saturn Square <laughs> and graduated. Yep. And now you are in South Asia? Were you, South Asia? Korea, yeah. South yeah. Korea. All right. Now, how was that experience? It was, honestly, it was rough. I mean, I was having my Saturn return when I was there. I was teaching English. I knew I didn't want to do that forever. And everyone I met was like either in the military or they were English teachers. And I remember kind of feeling like everyone else knew what they wanted to do with their life. And I just felt so lost. And at the same time, teaching English was the first job I ever had that I didn't hate. So I felt kind of hope, like I remember teaching English and feeling like I kind of liked it uh, and that giving me hope that maybe I could teach something someday. And and I knew it wasn't going to be English because I didn't care that much about it. Um, But it did kind of open up that door. And then doing Reiki there also, I think it just opened everything else up slowly over time to to um release some of the conditioning i had i guess and that's another thing living in another country did it 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 kind of forces you to realize that a lot of things you're taught are just the way people around you think when you're in a culture that believes opposite you know you you just it's totally different and yet people are just fine you know it's like you realize that so many of the things you believe are just because someone else believed in and a bunch of people agree <laughs> that it's right. Well, um, I tell people, I've said this to um, a lot of people. Hey, you believe what you believe because of the zip code you were born in. If you were so born, true. If you were born somewhere else, you would believe you would believe something else and you would be swearing that that is true. But most people don't step outside their circumference of awareness to see that, oh, you know, you you know, there's a, a large percentage of people that never travel, are born, live, and die, and never travel within 60 miles outside the radius of their birth. That's crazy to me. I mean... Especially somebody who just jumps on the plane and goes to South to- South Korea. Right? Without ever having gone there, I didn't really know anything about the culture. <laughs> you just, you just, hey, I'm going to South Korea. 
It was more like I wanted to teach English. I looked into different places where、um, you can do it.、Uh, mm. Asia pays better than other countries. They value teachers more.、Um, so there was a draw for that. And at the time,、uh, my boyfriend at the time was originally from South Korea. So I thought it would be fun. And it wasn't as fun as I thought. <laughs>、um, but, but I mean, I just learned so many life lessons while I was there. And I, you know, it really expanded my mind being from that small little isolated town in Washington. Well, well, while doing Reiki there, did you start dabbling into any other spiritual practices? Not yet. I didn't start doing that until after I left. After I left,、uh, I was there for about three years. I started getting into tarot. Oh.、And、that was like. That was like a moment because I remember, like, I, st- I learned tarot and I remember that one of the first readings I ever gave, I was like, I was paying to volunteer to read for strangers. Like, I paid to join this thing where I could read people or read people and then they give feedback. And one of the first readings I did, I told the guy I thought he was going to move to another country and renounce his material possessions. And his feedback was, I already booked the ticket. And I remember being like, whoa, <laughs> because it was, so, it was so accurate, but it was like, I, I didn't know where that ability came from. And it seemed, it seemed pretty fast considering I just started, like I was just new and I would just keep having these experiences where I would tell people what was going to happen and it would、were、happen. You, did you, when you, did you、uh, just buy a deck and intuitively start doing it? Or did you like look into the, the meanings of the cards and all of that stuff? Yeah, I looked into the meanings of the cards and I like studied them and I, Like, learn them and, and memorize them and stuff. But then I found that there was this intuition coming through too, where it would be like I would know the meaning of the card and I would start talking about that, but there would be something I would feel when I was talking. And when I would talk about what I was feeling, that's when it would be the thing that would blow, like, the person would really be like, whoa, you know, that's when it. So it was like, I, it was like, Mentally, I needed to grab on to the structure of what the cards mean, meant as like the, the pillars, and then the intuition would sort of flow in between those things. How long did you、uh, do tarot? When did you find astrology? I only found astrology in、uh, maybe like July of 2020. So, A little over three years ago, I picked up my first astrology book on the moon. <laughs>、right. um, so, up until then, I was doing tarot. I, would, I worked at a crystal shop for a while doing readings. And so, I did tarot Wait, for quite a while. How long was that? How long? That's what I was about to ask. How long did you do tarot? Probably, I don't know, probably like five years, six years. And then once I got into astrology, it just sort of fell away a bit. Um, I mean, I'm you, not wh- against it now or anything. Wh- 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 why do you think uh, uh, tar- you let tarot fall away after you really got into astrology? Yeah, well, I still love tarot and tarot readers, so it's nothing like that. It's nothing like I d- didn't like it anymore. But it's for me, astrology, I think, is just the right tool because I'm a little bit more detached from the person when I'm doing the reading. Whereas when I'm doing a tarot reading, I'm like energetically, it's like I'm, I'm more enmeshed in the person's feelings. I don't know how to explain it. And it's, I think astrology is better for me because I can zoom out more. And it's like the right level of invested, and, and, but also still not like totally energetically like enmeshed with the person. I don't know how else to explain it. When you do tarot, it felt like you w a s had to connect more with that person's energy field. But, yeah, and, and, yeah. And it was more draining.、Uh, as with astrology, it kind of maybe it, you could look at their energy field from the observer and not actually have to be connected to it. Kind of, although I wouldn't say it was draining, but I would say that I think. 
I feel like I'm more helpful when I'm looking at a chart. It's like I can, it's like I can see more of the broad overview. And also with the kind of questions I feel I can answer with astrology are a little bit more like the kind of stuff I want to help people with. Whereas with tarot, it, you can answer anything. So it's a lot of like what's happening right now, what's going to happen next week. You know, there's a little bit more of that tendency to, to want to get into the fortune telling. And I'm not against that. I just like astrology better. I just, I don't know. It just felt like everything clicked when I started doing it. All right. All right. Um, so you are, are modern. You do modern astrology techniques. You're a modern astrologer. I do some, and I like a little bit of traditional as well. I wouldn't say I'm like fully well versed in every traditional technique, but I'm learning more and more. And the more, the more I do traditional, the more I like it. But I, I think it's good to keep modern too because. Sometimes just knowing something that with traditional is not always what clients are looking for, <laughs> right? Sometimes it'll tell you just like what is, and sometimes what is, is like, you know, your car got, went into the shop this week. Like, it's not what my clients want to know about. <laughs> okay. Okay. What do you think clients, what, what do you think, what, tell me your top, what, all right, what do you clients most want to know about yeah so a lot of my clients are like what's my purpose or they want to know why they're not fulfilled in their job or they want to know if they're on the right path um or or you know sometimes we're looking at the solar return they want to know what's coming up this year but if i were to only do traditional it would it would feel a little bit like it's not quite deep enough for people but then i think sometimes when we only do like either the evolutionary or modern to me it's a little too it's a like it it doesn't address the problems that are actually happening enough to, for me to feel like it's complete if that makes sense like evolutionary will really make you feel to me it makes me feel like really connected and and has those aha moments sometimes those simple metaphors with modern even with the modern rulers are just like it's one little statement but it's just like oh my god it blows your mind whereas i feel with traditional it's a little bit more like this is how things are this is the kind of job you have and it's a little bit more like practical but it feels like it's missing the the feeling behind it if that makes sense so I want both, and I think my clients want a little bit of both. Uh, not everything is for everybody, and uh, I, I think it's good to uh, to have a, a a hand up, dabble in a few different, you know, um, forms of astrology. So to say, you know, I, I just I heard you mention evolutionary as well which is more uh, soul based astrology mm -hmm. and you know not everybody want to talk about some soul stuff <laughs> <laughs> it goes both ways right where it's yeah. like there's those people who are like just tell me what's happening next week and then there's other people who are like that would feel lacking to them because they want they want more they want the full more like whole the whole thing so it, it yeah it totally depends on who you're talking to all right. All right. Um, now, you say you like to talk about purpose? Yeah, I talk about that a lot because I think, you know, when I was in Korea, I was trying to find my purpose and I felt like that, I mean, that was a huge problem in my life that I, this whole path was about trying to solve. You know, I was trying to feel like I was doing something that I was supposed to be doing or doing work that felt meaningful and like using my skills in a way that was actually helping people. And, and I felt like I wasn't there. And so a lot of my clients hear me talking about those problems and they want to find those solutions too. So that's what I love doing. I love helping people see like where the planets are in their chart and what stage they're in and how to work with it. Cause that's what I wish, you know, I wish I had back when I was in Korea, I wish I had a good astrologer who could tell me what a Saturn return really meant. 
um, and how to really work with it and that it's okay if during a Saturn transit you feel negative and down and you're seeing all the problems in your life and things aren't going your way. Like it's okay to feel that way in a Saturn transit. It's normal. And, you know, that's kind of what I try to bring to astrology is kind of helping people navigate those seasons of life and know they're not doing anything wrong. And sometimes just knowing it's going to end helps a lot. Do you see negative stuff in the chart? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. do you, do you, um, do you tell a, a person about that? It depends on what it is. Um, and how many problems we've already talked about that day. And <laughs> oftentimes I'm going to, I'm going to kind of zoom in on the active sort of challenges that the person has. Like, I'm just going to feel drawn to that Saturn or that Pluto or that Mars. If that, if it's an active thing in their life, um, so yeah, I talk a lot about the problems and I try to, and usually my clients find it validating. They're not, it's not like putting them down. Um, but also it has to be done in the right way because if I'm just like randomly pulling out like, oh yeah, these people in your life are really mean to you. The person is not going to, that doesn't help someone. So it, it really kind of depends on what the person asked me for in the beginning, uh, what they're mm -hmm. looking to know. And then also I kind of, I kind of just see how it goes and, and judge based on how they react and how they, what they seem to want. Some people are like, tell me every problem. I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll do that. Um, and other people are like, just tell me the good stuff. <laughs> and so I do, won't be as problem heavy for people like that. Do you think your years, your five years of tarot help you with, with delivery of astrology information? Yeah, well, I also, I didn't mention this part, but I also did a two-year degree after Korea uh, while I was doing tarot. I did a two-year degree in uh, mind-body transformational psychology from a college in Arizona called Suiha. Mm -hmm. And um, that helped me a lot with uh, ethics, delivery, and just kind of knowing how to work with people because for that core, for that two year course of study, I had to work with people every single week. Every single week I had like two or three free sessions I had to give on different things depending on what class I was in. So I got a lot of training in like coaching and um, just experience working with people. And you just learn, you learn over time um, how uh, everything, you know, how like not to let clients get under your skin, you know, how to manage your own reactions to things, how to kind of, it takes a lot of inner work to be a really good, I think, really good one-on-one -on -one practitioner of any, any topic. But with astrology, it's wait, like, wait, 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 <laughs> wait, hold up. I think you said, you just said something important and I don't want you to skip over that. Why do you feel to be a good 101 delineator of this information it takes a lot of inner work why do you feel that way well i think that we all have hang-ups we all have we're all human right so right. in any kind of one-on-one -on -one setting if you haven't done enough inner work you're going to transfer how you feel onto the client and the client might transfer things onto you this is something therapists learn but it's like you know, if I, if a lot of men in my life are jealous, then, and I book a session with you, I might feel like you're being jealous, even though you're not, because that's something that I've experienced so many times. You could do something teeny and I'm going to just project that onto you because that's been my experience so many times. And so I think we have to have at least a certain level of awareness of our own reactions to be good at working with clients because in one-on-one -on -one work, especially spiritual work, people are sometimes they're more vulnerable and there's, there's more of those, that energy, that transference can happen more, if that makes sense. Uh, uh, in the spiritual realm, when you work in, uh, the person is more wide open, pretty much is what you're saying more open and the energy fields are more open so it's you know 
Well, not only that, but when you have a chart in front of you, the client doesn't know the difference between whether you're speaking from the chart or from your own opinion. So like, that's something I learned reading tarot is like, when I am doing a reading, the person is not asking for my opinion. <laughs> Unless they specifically say, what do you think about this? They're not asking for what I think. They want to know what the cards say. In the astrology reading, they want to know what the chart says. And so even just that awareness that that unless someone's asking for my opinion, not to give it, you know, those little things that you you have to kind of care enough about the person to be willing to look at. Well, I ain't trying to put you out there like that. But what I'm hearing from you is, man, I, I'll be scrolling through YouTube and TikTok and watching some of these readers, and I could hear and see their, them projecting some of their own stuff with inside their readings. Is that what you pretty much said? Kind of, but it's like the more I, I guess... I guess you have to, you have to really care about people to want to not be like that, right? You have to really have a certain amount of ability, like to be good at one-on-one -on -one work, you have to care enough about not hurting the person to, to be willing to adjust, I think. Uh, yeah, I like that. Um, I think you hitting on uh touching on a lot of points that uh a lot of pe readers don't realize and don't well, think and, about yeah and clients don't like people in the spiritual community seeking you know readers don't always realize that just because someone has a psychic gift or a skill of being able to read a certain thing it doesn't necessarily mean they have they know how to handle it or they have the maturity to um, like handle those gifts, if that makes sense. Like some people are psychic, but they don't, they've never learned how to deliver the information. You know, other people, they have a skill and that doesn't necessarily mean that they're, they have good intentions to be honest. So like we all have to do our best to make sure the people we're choosing to work with are, are good for us for whatever, in whatever, you know, way. So a client actually should be choosy on who they allow to read them. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And I think clients, even with astrology, sometimes people don't know that not every astrologer covers every type of astrology and just even being able to be an informed client and like listen to that astrologer and see what they talk about and, and, you know, if they don't do fertility, maybe don't ask that person for a fertility reading. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. What house system do you use? I have used uh, mostly Placidus and Whole Sign. I still, the jury's out on whether I will ever commit to one or whether I'll still use both. But I found the more I use Whole Sign, the more I like it better. Okay. But well, I also, I don't think, I don't think Placidus is wrong. Uh, and I don't think that it like messes up your chart if you switch. I think sometimes people, when they're, it's a shame that when you start learning astrology, that's when you have to choose a house system because you don't know yet. You don't really know, you don't have the information to make the decision. So for people who are new, I always just say pick one. It doesn't really matter. Just pick one and start reading. Don't let that stop you. But for as far as like which one's better, I mean, they do say Plastis is better for like the more psychological things and the whole sign is in, in general good for like things happening in the external world. Um, but it's like, there's so much bias in even deciding because it's like, of course I want the one where I have the best chart <laughs> and it doesn't exist. <laughs> well, uh, my uh, entry door was, was modern astrology. I started with Placidus. But I have uh, graduated to traditional and I use whole sign. But um, you also could use a blend. Yeah. Well, and there's even like, you know, there's Vedic and there's true yes. serial. And it's and like. I, and I also wanted to say uh, when it comes to house systems, 
sometimes it depends on what you're doing Mm -hmm. because somehow systems work better with certain systems depending like horror works better with um uh uh i forgot the name of it uh red uh Pulfery? Is it Pulfery? No. Re- Reggio Montes. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, and there are, yeah, there are some systems where it's like, if you're doing annual perfections, you need to use whole sign. Like you can't just switch those things around, I, th- I think. Um, but then I also think like, for example, if someone's born in Norway or something, they're their chart and Placidus might have like one huge house. And so in that case, maybe I'll use equal sign for that person's just so that they get a more balanced reading. Cause it's, you know, it changes the chart a lot. If, if someone's born really close to the North pole or South pole. Uh, and the way I kind of explain it. And I have a question for you. When you was doing tarot, did you only have one deck? No, I had a few, but I had kind of one favorite one. Okay. So, what if you didn't use the one favorite one? What if you used one of the other ones? Did that, the message that you got from the other ones, that wasn't just as as effective as your favorite deck? Okay, well, the message might still be there, but my ability to kind of read it might have been easier with the deck I was used to. Yeah, I I understand. I, I guess what I'm saying is, when it comes to house systems, it, it's it's like a different deck, a, a yeah. different tarot deck. I mean, you could you still access in the same energy. It's it, true, it, and I think as long as you know how to read the house system you have, as long as you're using like proper technique, it's it's fine. You can use any house system you want to use. I, I think astrologers get a little too, um, <laughs> um, I don't know, worked up about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess like with anything you, you want to hold on to the thing you love and, and, yeah. you know, Hey, my religion's the best. No, my religion. No, yeah. <laughs> no, my house isn't the best. No, my house isn't the best. That type of stuff. Um, I, going back to purpose why do you think so many people struggle with not even knowing their purpose well I think a lot of us we don't purpose isn't something we get like lots of education on right like people aren't talking about it a lot people and the people who are it's like do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. But it doesn't address the actual real life experience of when you are not on the right path. And there are times where people are not on the right path or they can kind of feel this dissatisfaction when they're, you know, doing work that maybe isn't the most aligned with their chart, or maybe they haven't found what they're good at yet. And it's like, you can feel that. I think you can feel that because your inner soul or whatever is is telling you like we're not doing this right we got to adjust and that that seeking it's like you don't seek if you don't feel lost and I think that a lot of us interpret seeking as bad because we're not there our our mind wants to have the answer we want to be able to say like this is my path I know what it is and when we hit um indecision or we hit these patches of not knowing what to do, we have a tendency to think that we're doing everything wrong. But in reality, it's like that's your soul just, you know, crying out to you saying like, let's get, let's, let's uh, pivot a little bit. And there just isn't a lot of resources, I think, that are really good out there that really help people navigate those kind of transitions. Because um, it's just, it's not talked about that much. Like, what do you do when you feel lost and you can't find your purpose? Who do you call? <laughs> Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hmm. So when you look for purpose in the chart, what do you think your your go-to is? What would, what would be your go-to? 
Yeah, you know, it's oh, like- What would you suggest for somebody who is looking at their chart and say, hey, I'm looking for my purpose in the chart. What would you suggest they look at? So what people mostly are gonna start with is they're gonna look at their North Node. This is what people think they should start with, right? Because everyone says your North Node is your purpose. That's kind of true, but in my opinion, your North Node will make you happy. If you're honoring your North Node, I think it makes you feel kind of happy. But that might not necessarily be always what you're supposed to do in your job or your highest potential in career. And so this is something I think people mix up is the North Node with the Midheaven. I think the Midheaven's going to tell you a lot about your career, what's possible, you know, what, what your public image could be. Uh, what kind of work you could do. But I also am going to look at the ninth house, you know, for that feeling of meaning. What is going to make life feel meaningful? Is this person going to have meaning come to them through their job? Or are they going to find meaning and fulfillment in their family or in, you know, making money or in having a lot of friends and feeling like they belong or something else? So, I think the ninth house is going to be something I'd look at, but also we have to kind of look at the whole chart, right? Because like, what is your sun, moon and rising? And are you, are they getting to be able to express themselves in your life? Are you in a job where you can't naturally be your sun or your moon or your rising? Because that's going to ruin everything, (laughs) you know? So like, especially the moon, I think if your moon's needs aren't getting met, it's like, you're not going to feel good. Hmm. What is your favorite planet to talk about? Oh, probably. I mean, gosh, I love so many of them. <laughs> I I really like talking about Saturn. Um, I like I talk ooh, about Saturn. Ooh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> now, <laughs> Saturn is a malefic. Mm-hmm. Uh, Saturn. Um, Usually people are scared of Saturn. Yeah. Maybe that's why I want them to not be so scared. And I want, you know, I guess, why do I love Saturn? Yeah, because if you, if you <laughs> learn, if you learn your Saturn lesson, mm-hmm. it's not scary anymore. Right? Like if you face the fear, you're, you don't have to be afraid of the fear. Mm-hmm. If you can come to terms with the possible negative things in life then you don't have to live your life afraid of those negative things. So like Saturn rules death. People who have faced the fact that someday they're going to die and just can accept that are more free, I would say, than people who are afraid of dying. People who can accept death is more free than a person who is afraid of dying. Right? Because once you've accepted that you're going to die, doesn't it just make you want to live? Um, have you ever heard of Alan Watts? Yeah, I'm not too familiar with his work, but yeah, I have. Uh, uh, he does have a, he's, I remember him he, hearing him say, um, the day you realize and accept you're going to die is the day you can start living. Yeah. Well, and we could take that to a smaller scale, right? So like if if I'm afraid of saying the wrong thing, you know, and people judging me, if I live in that fear, I'm not going to say anything. But if I can face the fear that, yeah, sometimes people are going to judge me and sometimes I am going to be wrong. I am going to say the wrong thing. Then I can do a podcast and I can just say whatever I say. And I don't have to be so, you know, afraid to just do something when I face the fact that there's going to be some negative with it. And I'm willing to just go through that because in that negative, I get to have all the positive things. Now, Cassandra, I know you don't realize this but uh you're triggering my virgo over here <laughs> <laughs> you got my virgo energy just all uh, no 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 <laughs> <laughs> and which is interesting because you know this whole conversation is a, a lot of times i could pick out people's energy but this this whole conversation you've been throwing me for a loop a little bit so i haven't i i don't i haven't asked you what are your like your three majors or anything um 
for a while for a while i was picking up i was thinking some type of water you know and then the more i listen i'm like man i wonder if there's some sag in there yeah because you know you keep wanting to learn and steady constantly you know and so at first i was thinking like pisces a little bit got some pisces with some 12th house energy and some sage but then all of this you know uh now i'm thinking a little uh like some warrior type energy like man just go on out there and all that so I'm, I don't know if I'm getting a little Aries energy too I don't know you might what are your three majors yeah you're so you're so on on point though I have a moon in Pisces I have my sun in Sag and I'm a Virgo rising but I also have a stellium in Sag so I've got five planets there but one of them Saturn so I have Saturn conjunct uh, my chart ruler Mercury so that kind of adds in some of the I don't know maybe the love of Saturn and, and facing well, and, difficulties <laughs> well and then you know the uh I was picking up Sag I was thinking Sag when he was like man I just next thing you know I was you in South Korea somewhere <laughs> yeah. I'm like that's Sag and then you know so <laughs> So you're a Virgo rising, Sag, Sun, Pisces, Moon? Yeah. Hmm. So Saturn's traveling through your relationship zone right about now, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and all on your moon. Interesting. Yeah, it's going to hit my moon. Uh, well, and Neptune's been on my descendant, though. I think that's been harder. Wait, you have Mercury? Where's your Mercury? My Mercury's in Sag. Oh, mm. So, if you don't mind me asking a question. Of course. Uh, Mercury doesn't really like Sag. It's in detriment, right? Yes, yes. And with you being a Virgo rising, that would make you... Mercury, yep, in detriment in Sag, and that that Sag would be in your fourth house of home, family, and roots. And so, yeah. um, did you feel like, even though, oh, wait, hold up, hold up. Earlier, you said, you know, I learned to appreciate that Washington living a little bit more later on. Yeah. Is that a sign of the Mercury and detriment in Sagittarius in the fourth? Possibly. Possibly. Yeah, because, and it's also conjunct Saturn, um, but yeah, a feeling kind of limited when I was younger, feeling kind of stuck. You know, I remember just hating that I couldn't go to a mall when I was a kid because we didn't have any malls and just feeling like um, there was just this whole world out there I didn't get to experience. Although, again, now now looking back, I'm like, this is the best childhood ever. But when I was young, I, f I felt like I couldn't get out, you know, and I know a lot of people in small towns or even in cities who grow up with these certain mindsets around them that even if there's another community two blocks away, it's not that easy to get out of a certain mindset sometimes. So I did really feel that, if that makes sense, that sort of isolation when I was younger and that um, that struggle. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And then... Uh... That Pisces moon, that's that might be why you was in AA at yep. 14. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So as a Pisces moon now, what is your form of escapism? Well, let me think. I think astrology helps because it's like I get to escape a little bit into that for good reasons, right? So it's like a more positive escape. 
Um, but I think if I'm going to escape in any way, it's probably through like listening to podcasts about the nature of the universe and maybe playing some video games sometimes, although I don't do it very often. Um, but that would probably be my preferred form of escape at the moment. I'm not recommending it or anything, but I do think like most people with Pisces, they, they kind of need that a little bit. They need what? To feel like they're going into another world sometimes. Like to just break away from reality for a little bit and then come back, you know. But it does, it is like each moon has its own need of what they need when they're upset and they're all totally different. Hmm. Do you think, do you think Pisces moon is easy having a Pisces moon? No. No, I think it's hard. You think it's worse than having a Scorpio moon? I don't know, because I don't know what that feels like. I think it's probably, I think Pisces Intense. moon, it's probably, yeah. <laughs> I think Pisces moon is probably easier to let things go that that are disturbing. Like we can kind of wash it away in some way. Then a Scorpio moon where it's it really, it's hard. Um but I think the overwhelming emotions, most Pisces moons I know don't like it because it's it's hard going through life being so sensitive. You can't just get rid of all the mean people. You, you have to kind of learn how to deal with them. And um, it it's not like, I mean, you can only get your skin to be so thick, you know, without lying to yourself when you are sensitive. And I think it's hard. Uh, I do. Huh. As, well, I, now I kind of see why you were saying um, tarot. Uh, I can see how astrology is a little bit easier for you with that Pisces moon than tarot. <laughs> right, because if a client's like extra whatever, I'm going to feel it, right? I'm going to feel... Um, whatever that energy is. And I wouldn't say I'm, I have a hard time with clients who have feelings or anything. I actually want them to feel safe and come to me, but yeah, for whatever reason, the, the open energy of tarot and the lack of a structure that the chart gives, um, there's just something about it that just helps me manage it better. Hmm. Did you say this, uh, astrology, uh, Next with your Virgo more than because okay, let me ask you this. Could, <laughs> could you say tarot is more Pisces and astrology is more Virgo? Probably, but what I love about astrology though is you can kind of make it you can kind of make it your own. You can bring your own flavor to it, right? So someone who's more Piscean could still do astrology. They just might talk more about archetypes and I don't know. They might just not do much of the, you know, debilities and dignities and stuff. You know what I mean? But like, so I, I see that in it. But yeah, I think astrology is more Virgo because it has the structure and it has some rules to it. And it has, you can be right or wrong with astrology. Whereas, you know, with tarot, I think you can flow with it a little more. Um, and you can, someone could pick up a tarot deck and intuitively just not learn any of the rules. And if they're psychic enough, they could use it and read. I don't know if that's as true about astrology. Maybe it is. Maybe they could look at a natal chart, but as far as start doing like uh, predictions and stuff like that, you might need to know some techniques and all that to get the predictions right. Because to get those predictions right, that's when all the dignities and all of that come into play right you know what I'm saying so, yeah um yeah uh do you do do you mess with oracle or anything I used to I mean I have some that I'll pull occasionally I think they're nice for just personal use when you are upset you know if I'm upset or if I have an emotion about the thing I'm not going to get as good of a read for myself because I am invested in the outcome I want so pulling an oracle card and just reading what it says can be so nice. 
Um, and I think Oracle is good for beginners who are just, they want to pull a card, but maybe tarot is a little intimidating. They don't want to have to learn a bunch of different meanings to get started. So I think it's nice for that as well. What, um, what different types of services do you offer? Like um, types, what different types of readings do you do? Yeah, so I do natal readings. I do solar return readings. I'll talk to people about relationships. I don't love doing um, synastry as much, like comparing people's charts and relationships. I like, but I'll help. I don't know how to explain it. I'll help the person navigate their relationship or help them figure out what they need to do to find a relationship or, you know, like, so it's, I want to help the person navigate their life. Uh, so I do that kind of stuff. And, um, oh, I also read, you know what I also read are persona charts, which I really love. And that, what, and those, the intuition that? kicks in more. Okay. So I never heard kind of that. A, these are kind of a, I think more, they would be considered more modern, but it's right. whenever the sun hits a point for the per first time, that's your persona chart of that thing. So there's a persona of your midheaven. There's a persona of your moon. There's a persona of everything. And it's supposed to be like putting that placement under a microscope and looking at it. It doesn't supersede the natal chart. The natal chart is always the natal chart. It doesn't matter. You know, you know this. It doesn't yeah. matter how old you are. Your natal chart, it's, it's the same no matter what. Yeah, you have your natal promise that stays the same. Yeah. yeah and, you, you know, you change during cycles of life and you grow yeah. as a person. But your natal chart never changes. So the persona chart is like... It's like if you were to take that planet and put it under a microscope and look at the more fine tuning of that, the energies of that sphere of life. And you can go by the planetary sphere, you know, like Mercury ruling communication, Venus ruling love, but you can also go by the person's natal chart and what that planet means in their chart. So like if you're an Aries rising, you can look at your Mars because that's going to be your chart ruler. And so it'll tell you about you as well. Um, is astrology and YouTube and all that, is, is that all you do or do you do something else on the side? You know, I was doing only that until about March and then I ended up getting a job too. Um, I'm hoping I can get it back to just doing astrology again. Um, because it's so good, you know, it's so good. It's, it's the best when the best feeling I have is like when I get off a zoom call because it's just. I don't know. You get to help people in such a cool way to like see who they really are. And, and there's such a feeling of like, um, self-acceptance that can come, um, you know, a validation. It's, 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 it's could I say it's really a, a cool moment to see the light bulb come on in somebody when you're giving a read. Yeah, and there's something about it that it makes me feel so good because even if like they got 10 astrology readings, they're going to get a different, a little bit of a different flavor from each astrologer. Some of them are going to say the same things, but they're all probably going to see something different that the other one didn't see. And so it's like, it brings in the feeling that I, I was able to help someone in a way that maybe nobody else could exactly help them in that way. Or with that thing. I know I asked you about uh, your favorite planet to talk about. What do you think your least favorite planet is? Well, it kind of depends because it's like, even though I love Saturn, sometimes I hate Saturn. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason, the reason is because one of the things about planets is when you study a planet, you kind of enter the sphere of that planet. You enter the arena of that planet. And I've noticed that when I do a series, because on my channel, I'll do like a series on Pluto or I'll do like a series on Saturn. That planet's energy shows up <laughs> whenever I do a series on a planet or a course on a planet. So I don't think I'll ever do a course on Saturn again. <laughs> well, it's... Um... Basically, what you said is some validation for me as far as what I've told people before. Hey, when you start studying something, um, you know, especially the beginners, you know, 
I said, hey, can you tell can you tell a water person from a fire person from an air person from a can you tell that? And and I said, hey, the, when I first started studying at the I started noticing everybody that started showing up around me when I was studying that element, they were all that element. Yeah. And so, and so you gotta be mindful when you start studying this stuff who is around you and and who is coming into who you're interacting with. Yes. Okay. Well, and another thing that happens is that your natal promise related to that planet is going to be a flavor of how that planetary energy shows up to you. Right. So like, um, I'm going to use my own chart for an example. I have Venus conjunct Uranus. So if I study Venus, I'm going to get more of that Venus Uranus than I am just Venus by itself, just because that's, that's my natal promise. That's how Venus is going to show up in my life. So you get strange and shocking and unexpected events when you start looking at. Or just weird, um, you know, weird potential lovers, (laughs) you know, weird, weird people. (laughs) who want to try to date me or like weird kind of different, not mainstream experiences in love or things like that. Yeah. Have you run away from that or have you stepped into that? Well, the thing is if someone or, or was, had a, or did both, Hey, I've done that. And I don't yeah. want to do that no more. <laughs> well, it's, I think it's a little both because it's like when you have like a, a placement like that, it's like, I wouldn't be happy with a, love that wasn't a little bit different or different for me or kind of shake things up a little bit, it, I would get bored. Right. So it's like, there's part of that of just knowing yourself and knowing what you need. But I think, I think when working with the planets, you can kind of pay attention to how that natal promise is showing up and then back off if it's getting to be too much or, or just notice it and be like, oh, okay, that, you know, that's what that looks like. It's just so cool that it's it can be so experiential. Astrology can. Do you use uh do you use asteroids or any other other stuff? Wait, use what asteroids? Astro- asteroids and stuff like that. I not as much, not as much. I'll use them a little bit here and there, but I really love the planets. I really love the grahas. I just think there's so much we get from the planets that I know everyone wants to know their asteroids, but it's like you're sometimes the question someone asks me about an asteroid, they actually, the planet has the answer. So sometimes I just have to help the person see that. Um, but I'm not as big on the asteroids at this moment in time. I'll, I'll look at them. I'll look at fixed stars, but unless it's like, doing something really like conjunct a personal planet or something, I'm probably not going to bring it up unless the person asks me to. Um, is there anything else you wanted to cover about astronomy? Oh, geez. Um, I, I wish more people knew what astrology could help them with. Like, Because to me, it's like a guide for every aspect of life that never ends. Like I never, I never get done with learning what astrology can teach me about myself. Well, I I did have that question. Um, The, the, are you still studying? You still teaching yourself? Uh, Well, did, oh, that's the first one. Did you, uh ever join someone's class or did you are you how'd you learn it what'd you learn I was self-taught in the beginning I bought a bunch of books and read them and I started reading charts (laughs) I don't a lot of people that wouldn't be their path but I had already like I wasn't afraid of working with people at that point so there was none of that to to deal with I had Mm kind of overcome that years before but Gosh, in the beginning, looking back, I'm like, how did I talk to someone about their North Node for like an hour? I don't know how I even did that now looking back on it, but I would just start reading charts and some of what I learn is from what people tell me in readings. And it's not like I didn't know anything before, but 
a lot of what I've learned has just been like reading different books. Um, I've taken some classes. I've taken some like online courses on a little bit on kind of traditional, a little bit on um, evolutionary, read a lot of books and started reading charts. And I think it's the reading the charts is really where you learn. You really, really learn things because just getting the experience and, and, um, observing people Mm. like observing the people, you know, with certain placements and how they kind of react to life. That's another really big one. How how did, uh, I forgot to ask you that. How does your family and friends feel that you jumped in, you're an astrologer and tarot reader and astrologer and all that. How do they take that? Most of my friends at this point are already into it. So it's not like, right. Cause like, I'm, I started doing Reiki back in 2012. So in this 11 years, it's been, I, I have friends who are into what I'm into. So no one was like, Oh my God, no one was surprised <laughs> by the oh, time, right. by the time I learned astrology, I had been on this path for long enough. No one was surprised as far as how my family feels. They never have told me <laughs> how they feel. And I, I mean, it's just like, I don't bring it up to them either. I'm not like, I mean, if they ask me what I'm up to, I'll tell them. And then usually the conversation just goes in another direction. And you know what? I think that's okay. I think it's okay to have people in your life who don't get what you do. This was something that bothered well, wait, me a lot. Wait, wait, wait. Why is that okay? Because, well, I think this is something that bothered me a lot when I was younger, when I started doing Reiki, that everyone wasn't like into it or supportive. I don't know. There was just this weird hang up about it of like, why don't my, why don't people understand me? And it's like, I, I think it's good to, if you're in that place, or at least for me, I've, I've sort of grown into it to a point where I don't need people to understand me as much. I still get a little nervous when I tell strangers that I'm an astrologer because I don't know how they're going to react, but, um, I think I'll just keep telling them until I don't feel nervous anymore. <laughs> what do you say your North Node? What, what sign is your North Node in? My North Node is in Taurus. Oh, all right. Oh, mm. ninth house. Yes. I have a ninth. I have a ninth house North Node as well. Really? It's Aquarius. Okay. Yeah. And I'm also self-taught as well. <laughs> so. You're also I, what? Self-taught? self-taught as well. I grad. I read a whole bunch of books, but I did mostly read. I pretty much learned. Took the route you did. Uh. Uh-uh. Well, and I think it's not for most people, though. I will say that. It, I think astrology especially is complicated, and especially in the early stages. People can confuse themselves or get hung up on things that, that aren't big deals, like which house system do I choose? So I think, I think it's okay for people who want to take courses on it to take courses and to learn from teachers or, you know, to get more hands-on um help but I'm not that kind of person I really have to kind of learn myself sometimes the hard way (laughs) but it's just I find I get bored if I'm in a class it's I feel like it's going too slow and then I just sometimes I I want to just skim through and then come back to the information later and and I don't know I just I think I learn a little differently than most people What do you think about the word free spirit? I would say I am a free spirit. (laughs) Um, I definitely feel like a free spirit. I like that word. Um, I don't know. I I feel like (sighs) sometimes though in my life, I feel like maybe I've been too much of a free spirit and not willing to commit to certain things that probably would have helped me be more free. So it kind of goes back to the whole Saturn thing where... Wait, 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 wait. You was too free and, but you should have committed to something that would have been, explain that thought. (laughs) Yeah. So I'll just give an example. Mm -hmm. Being such a free spirit that I don't want to have a job. I want to work for myself, but then maybe I'm not quite at a level where I can make enough doing that. And so then I'm less free because 
I won't commit to the thing that would actually give me more freedom. Mm. Right? Because like having a job, yeah, you have to show up on time and stuff, but then you have savings and you can take vacations and you have the means to, you know, do the things that you're seeking with that freedom. So I think in a lot of cases, I can just see how in the past I've made decisions that would prioritize my freedom in the moment, but I wouldn't be as free later on. Whereas sometimes when I prioritize my security in the moment, it helps me have more freedom ultimately. Do you think that's also a sign of uh, Mercury and detriment? Um, you think so? I don't know. What do you think? Do you think so? Well, I mean, you sound like you learned something. It was like, hey, I, when I do this spur of the moment, I'm putting myself in a detrimental situation. Mm. Maybe. Yeah, I never thought of that. I always, when I think of Mercury and Sag, I think of like rambling a little bit, getting off topic, telling stories, or, you know, I exaggerate really bad to the point where I've had to work on this because people who are more analytically minded will take me seriously. I'm like, no, you can't do that. You you can't take me that seriously. When I'm joking, like I'll be joking and it's like, to me, it's obviously a joke, but those are the ways that I, I see that Mercury and Sad showing up is where like I'll speak about something from the biggest perspective and sometimes miss the detail I should have said, you know, miss the, the really specific um, next step detail the person really needed. You know, it's kind of like when someone asks you for directions, they don't need 10 ways to get there. They just need one, right? So like Mercury and Sag, I have to work on that ability to just sometimes you know answer the question (laughs) Mm. all right did you do you think that the more you learn about astrology um your perspective on the way life worked shifted yeah and maybe that's why i love saturn is just because i think my perspective before was like more, um, I don't know, like it was harder to face negative things and it was more, I, I don't know how to explain it, but I feel like I can understand people more. I can understand why in certain, like in certain situations when I was younger, things didn't work out as well for me. I can see how other people were taking different approaches. It, it has, it has helped me learn things that I just, for whatever reason, didn't learn through other means, but it's, it's astrology kind of makes it fun to learn about my imbalances and, um, like how life works, just like you said. And last question I have is, um, what has astrology done for you? Oh man, astrology has, it really has helped me more than anything on a personal level to understand people because there's just something about being able to see that, you know, maybe that person who is being passive aggressive, maybe they're a Mars in cancer, you know, like it just, it helps me to be able to have a framework for why people are the way they are instead of just being frustrated with them when they don't meet my needs. Or like another example I'll give on that is like, um, there's a certain moon sign. I'm not even going to say what it is, but it just drives me nuts. And I can see how it makes an aspect to something in my chart that it's, that helps me to see that it's really not that like those people doing that thing are horrible. It's just that you know, it just kind of pings at this thing inside of me that is irritated. And so it kind of helps me to feel like I can understand myself and my reactions better. And also I can understand where people are coming from more and, um, how things fit together and how cycles fit together and, and how, you know, calling on planetary energies can bring balance to my life, you know, like to balance out that fourth house stellium, I can focus on the 10th house. And it just, it gives a different framework for self-development for my personal life, but also in helping people that is just, it's so fresh and it's so different, but it's so like connected. 
Mm. You know what I heard you say? What? It it has helped my little sensitive Pisces moon <laughs> not take everybody so serious and get hurt. <laughs> I think so. I think so. And I think, yeah, I think regardless of moon sign, we, we all have something that astrology can teach us. And it just, it doesn't end, you know, e- even if it's just knowing that Saturn is in my relationship house right now. And, and so maybe there might be some more obstacles in relationships. And if I want to work with that energy, I can focus on resolving those obstacles and not run away from them because Saturn's going to make that known to me during that time. And so when it does happen, I'm not going to be blindsided by it and I'm going to know how to work with it as well. How many countries have you visited? Um, let me think. I've been to Norway, Sweden, um, South Korea, Thailand, Japan. I think that's it. Oh, and Canada. That's not enough. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't well, know. well, you're talking to somebody who's never left the country, so. Oh, yeah. I mean, I feel well, like. Wait, 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 wait. Why you had to say it like that? Like. <laughs> 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 well, okay, but with that North Node in the ninth, do you ever want to? Like, have you ever wanted to leave? Or does that only show up for you as, like, wanting to learn more and know all the things about all the things? I've thought about taking a trip, like, you know, a cruise or something, you know. But uh, I, it probably shows up more mentally, you know. Um, I, I I would tell people, I, I leave the country every day. Cause I used to drive. I used to drive, be an Uber, Uber and Lyft driver. And I, I, I said, I used, I leave the country every day. With, I leave through p- other people in conversations. Yeah, that like mental exploration. Yeah, and so when somebody from another country would get in the car, I would pepper them with questions about the country and all of that, and it'd be like I was walking the streets of their country looking through their eyes that's cool but with that being said um how 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 can people do you have a website how can people get in touch with you uh yeah promote all your stuff uh uh facebook all of that yeah my website is saffron sage astrology and uh, that's the same as my YouTube channel, Saffron Sage Astrology, and I'm on Instagram at the Saffron Sage. No Twitter. Um, I think it's I don't remember what my Twitter is. I'm not on Twitter very much. Uh, me, hey, me. The, we, we we can't be on all of them. Huh? We try right, to. Yeah. <laughs> we try to, but man, that that social media stuff, that stuff is a job by itself. Um, yeah, it is. And, and and that's how people can contact you for uh, uh yeah my website like yeah that? my website has a services page and it also has a classes page so and I have a couple oh, of you, free you, you teach classes yeah I have some classes um I'm about to do one on the um aligned career so like telling people what their sun moon rising and everything means for career so that'll be my next one it's gonna start soon so oh okay okay well, I, I want to thank you for, you know, joining us and, and giving us your, your time and sharing your story with us. Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, you know, I, you, you you look on YouTube, you see a lot of videos. You always see astrologers uh, talking about uh, astrology information, but you never really see them talking about themselves bringing you in and you know uh letting people know we are real people yeah we just might be just real people who were nerds did a lot of reading (laughs) it's true it's a good job for people who like to read (laughs) and 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 let me uh I, i did want to say this to you uh i really feel uh that something you said you did uh, you find 
a lot of reading, uh, learning through actually looking at the charts and talking to people, uh, learning astrology is 50% reading and 50% having conversations with other people about their chart. Yeah. I mean, there's magic in there in that experience of just letting people kind of teach you what those placements, how they manifest in their life. I'm glad you said that because as a, as people who are just coming into astrology, re- repeat that? People need to teach you? What do you mean yeah. by that? Well, kind of like letting them teach you, letting them tell you what happened, how that showed up, and listening, right? Listening. Sometimes I think sometimes we feel pressure as a, I feel pressure as an astrologer to tell someone everything, but that's not the best reading. The best reading is listening to the person and talking to them. So there people really need that. They need to be able to talk about their chart sometimes and, and just have someone listen and say, yep, that is, that it does make sense that those planets would show up like that. And here's when it might happen again, you know, or something like that. But it's like people need I think it makes astrology better when we're doing it as a conversation, not just, and not having clients come to me going, tell me the future (laughs) and then not participate. It works better when the client feels comfortable sharing a little bit about themselves. So basically you're saying, Hey, yo, when you come to an astrology, um, reading, it's a give and take. It's a conversation. It's more of a conversation. Don't just sit there like a bump on the log. (laughs) Well, actually, I do have clients who sometimes listen, and that's fine, but Mm -hmm. they're allowed to talk, (laughs) too. (laughs) All right. Uh, uh, Thank you again. Uh, The Saffron Sage, right? Yes, that's right. All right. Everybody, please go and join in in, uh, her page. Uh, Watch her videos on YouTube. I want to thank you all for joining me. For episode 55, Meet the Astrologer with Cassandra Osterberg. Right? Osterberg. Osterberg. All right. Thank y'all. Y'all know how I end this. Know that self balance in. I started off with questions, and then it's number two. Things on my mind. Why this? Why that? What should we do? The question that the search is. You dive into the seeking. Go for some ass. Leak it. These niggas get to tweak it. Where you don't be getting to preach it. You don't be telling me. That my fate is in the stars, you remain in the G. You got the recipe to get the end to see. I'm shifting gears on the thing that you won't believe. One, now people two, don't see. Three. She starts on Christmas Eve. It's from the start, that's why you trap, you stuck, you can't leave. Man. You best be on your knees. Confess your sins of move. Don't knees. have no question, have the face, you trust, you told the truth. You think it can't be slanted, you think it just be planted. It's warfare, the bonds flow. 